Okay, um, so thank you. So my talk is about uh, constructing lattice-based signatures without trapdoors. So I don't know, I mean, you saw you can construct trapdoors, but uh, you can do things uh, without them as well. Um, so signature schemes, I would say that they're probably one of the most important public key primitives. So if we want to get lattice-based crypto to be uh, sort of used at some point, uh, we should really get these to be right. Um, encryption schemes, which is, I guess, another really important public key primitive, I think we already have it from lattices. So n true from, uh, whatever, 15 years ago, maybe even more, is really quite good, and now we have some, uh, you know, foundations for its hardness, but signatures, uh, I, I still think there's a lot of work to be done because we can't quite get them to be short enough and competitive. So this work, I think, gets us quite close to, uh, to what we need. I mean, we're not quite there yet, but uh, I think we're getting there. So there are two ways to construct signature schemes. One is sort of the hash and sign way. Um, so that's what you saw using trapdoors when Daniela gave the talk. And the other one is the fiat Shamir transformation where you convert it from an identification scheme. So the nice thing about the uh, conversion from an identification scheme is that no trapdoor is needed. So, and perhaps not having a trapdoor could save us something, maybe not asymptotically, but it, in practice. So, um, uh, so a lot of signature schemes, there's been, there's been some work done. So um, I guess the first one was by Gentry, Piker, by Kunatanathan, uh, really like a breakthrough work in 2008, uh, using a trapdoor of ITI. Um, then there were these other works, uh, with the most efficient being the, the recent work by Michancho and Piker, just two talks ago. Uh, Fiat Shamir, uh, much less work. I guess it's, I don't know, not as interesting maybe, but um, not as theoretically, uh, so you know, I, I did two things. Uh, uh, <laughs> But, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, as of now, I mean, I'm not going to really put up uh, what the comparisons are. Um, but as of now, the Fiat Shamir theoretically is not as efficient as uh, this in practice. But in practice, uh, sorry, as this theoretically, but in practice, I think it's more efficient. And so the point of this work is to get this to be even more efficient and almost you know, implementable, and actually implementable. All right, so all of lattice-based lattice encryption is really based on knapsack problem. And I think the reason we call it lattice-based encryption is because knapsack sounds like from the 80s, but lattice is the more modern term uh, that we use. Uh, so the knapsack problem is the following. You're given this um, matrix A, and it's random in ZQ, so all the entries are random. Then you pick some vector S, and it has short coordinates from some distribution. That doesn't really matter for this talk. Um, and then you multiply A by S to get T. So T is just A by times S mod Q. In this talk, I'm going to use orange to be elements with small coefficients and uh, black to be everything random in ZQ or big in ZQ. OK, so the problem is given A and T, find a small S prime, maybe not the same S because there could be multiple, so that A S prime equals T mod Q. This is the knapsack problem. And um, the hardness of the knapsack problem, very sort of um, a basic thing is that it's harder, it depends on the um, size of S that you're asked to find. If the size of S, sort of the optimal is the size of S where it's, almost, it's basically unique. And then as you kind of allow the coefficients of S to be bigger and bigger, uh, the problem becomes easier. And on the other hand, when you, as you, if the coefficients of S are too small to start with, it, the problem again becomes easier and easier. So what you want to do in designing uh, lattice-based constructions is to get um, the knapsack problem to be hard kind of as far as close to this as possible. So the connection to lattice problems is really the connection from the knapsack to, uh, to average case problems, which then have connections to worst case problems. But this is sort of not important anymore uh, for this construction. So when S, the coefficients of S are quite big, meaning there's lots of collisions, so it's not a unique S, so that AS equals T, it's called the small independent solution problem, and it has connections from worst case lattice problems. When um, S is small, on the other hand, this is the LWE. I put it in quotes because it's not quite, I mean, it's not exactly LWE. I think LWE is stronger than what we need here. And most constructions do not really need the full power of LWE. I think the one exception is the talk you saw previously. And uh, I, the only one I can think of is signatures uh, without random oracles. But everything else that's based on LWE, like encryption schemes, don't really need the full power of LWE because you don't need to have a lot of samples. So this is why I think the knapsack problem is the more um, appropriate thing to say in, at this point that we're basing our um, hardness on. OK, so the results of this talk are the following. So I'll give a construction based on sys that's over here. And then I'll give a construction based on LWE that's kind of over here, based on how, you know, how we know how to solve um, knapsack problems. 
So uh, this one is, I don't know, if, if you think that uh, LWE is, a, is not as hard as cis, then you might say, well, this is more interesting. If you really believe in this curve, then this is the best cryptanalytic work that's known, then you will say, okay, I don't care what the problems are called, but this is higher up. So these are the two um, results of this work. And the results sort of obviously extend to rings, uh, ring sys and ring LW. So here is the signature based on sys, and then the slight modification of it will be based on LWE. Um, so the secret key is going to be a matrix S, and the public key is going to be a random matrix A, and a matrix T equals AS mod Q. So that's it. Quite simple. And the signature is going to follow the Fiat Shamir uh, framework. So if you kind of familiar with um, the Schnorr signatures, just think of them here and try to kind of map uh, the letters that correspond to what you know. So what you first do is pick a random Y. This is kind of your masking parameter. Uh, then you compute, this is your challenge, which is the hash of AY mod Q and your message. And then you compute your signature, which is S times C plus Y. So the hope here is this Y kind of covers up S times C enough that uh, it doesn't reveal anything. And then the output is ZC. That's the signature. The verification is uh, kind of uses the, the fact that H, uh, the, this multiplication, vector multiplication, has some homomorphic properties. So what it does is, let's look at this condition first. It checks that H of AZ minus TC mod Q is C. Right? So this is uh, AZ minus TC is really AY. I like at that. And you have to check that z is small. So this doesn't happen in number theoretic constructions. You don't care about the size of the discrete log that you find. But here, you really do care. So z has to be small. So let's um, kind of see what we need for uh, security of, these, of this construction, this type of construction. Um, you want two properties. So let's look at this bottom one first. You kind of want that the signature is independent of the secret key. Now, this is you know, not, not a precise statement. But uh, you, know, you don't want the signature to leak anything about the secret key. That's a good idea. That's something you want to have. And then you want to have this thing. Given the public key, the secret key is not unique. Uh, this is uh, some stronger than what you need to use in Fiat Shamir, but for lattices, I, I think you need this. Anyway, so and here's the security reduction. You're given some A. I'm going to reduce from sys. So you're given some A, and I want to solve sys. So I want to find this small vector s so that as equals 0 mod q or AS equals T mod Q, whatever. AS equals 0 or T, it, it doesn't really matter. The target could be anything. Um, so pick a random S. And I'm going to send AAS to the adversary. So that's going to be the public key. Then the adversary is going to challenge me with messages, but I can sign completely validly because I know S. And, um, and the signature you know, hopefully has this property that it's, uh, the adversary does not know what secret key I know. And then using the forking lemma, I'm going to do some, you know, the forking lemma magic and end up with this solution, A times Z minus Z prime plus SC minus um, SC prime minus SC equals 0. So this is really the solution to cis. So before I showed cis, this had to be T, but 0 is, is OK. Anyway, um, so now the point is that all of these guys are orange, meaning they're small. And so this is a valid solution to cis, except if these guys, if this somehow is 0. Right? So this is where, why it's important for the adversary to not really know s. Because if he doesn't know s, then he cannot force this to be 0 for all the s's. Okay? So here's the security reduction idea, is that at the end, you, get, you kind of extract this from an adversary that breaks your scheme. This is a solution to cis. And we want this to be independent of s. We want zc to be independent of s so that this is not 0. And you want this thing to be small so that cis is hard, because the larger you make this, the easier cis is. So how do you, so now how do you pick this random y, and uh, how do you satisfy these, these two properties that we want? So you could make y to be uniformly random mod q, and that would really hide z completely, uh, sc completely. The problem is that then z will be too big, and the solution to cis is not going to be interesting. It's actually going to be easy to break the signature. The other option is, well, let's make y small. But then if you make y too small, it may be leaking something about sc when you add sc plus y. 
because you're not, you're not really modding by Q anymore. You're just uh, kind of adding Y to this vector SC. So now Z will not be independent of S. So this is a problem. So what you do is rejection sampling. Um, make Y small, but only output ZC if Z meets a certain criteria. We're going to force a distribution on Z that's independent of SC. So here's the rejection sampling that uh, was from uh, 2009. So this was from my paper in 2009. So let's pretend the range of coefficients of SC is, of every coefficient is pretty small. So I'm going to drown out this range by um, picking Y to be from a slightly bigger range. But now Y plus SC, you know, if SC is here, then Y plus SC would be somewhere here. This would be distribution. Or if, you know, SC is here, then Y plus SC would be over here. And if I ever output Z that's over here, the adversary will know. It's like, oh, you know, there's something. SC was actually on this side, so I know something about S. So what you can do, the simple solution, is, well, you only output things that are in the sort of, that are possible for, for any value of SC, and this uh, seems to work. So this actually hides S if you output C, and Z only if it's here. So the question is now, uh, what's the probability that you actually output the signature? Because, you know, you might have to re do rejection sampling. You have to start all over. Well, the, let's say the probability is P, that, you, that, that Z is in this range. Uh, and you want P to the M, because Z is an M-dimensional vector, to be constant, because you don't want to reject too many times, because you want the signature to finish. Uh, so you need P to be about 1 minus 1 over M. So, I mean, don't worry about this. So the point is the coefficients of SC must be M times smaller than coefficients of Y. So this, the noise that you drown out SC with must be about M times bigger. So what you get is the following. Well, the coefficients of SC are small, order 1. Uh, the coefficients of Y have to be M times bigger, so order M. And so the norm of Z, which is about the norm of Y, is order M to the 1.5. That's the norm of the vector when all its coefficients have size m. OK, so the question is, can we do better? Because the smaller that z is, the harder the problem is. And in this work, it's, yes, you can get z to be order m. Uh, and the idea, which I'm not really going to explain too much, is different rejection sampling. I, I mean, I, I tried to draw a picture, but then the result looks wrong. Um, so I'm just going to kind of state it fast. <laughs> Uh, so the previous rejection sampling constructed a uniform distribution in a box, or a ball, it doesn't matter. But uh, this new rejection sampling constructs a normal distribution, uh, so a Gaussian distribution. And, and I just want to point out for people who kind of read lattice literature that this Gaussian seems to be quite different than the Gaussian that's used in, in, um, in, for lattices. So I don't think it has anything to do with why you need to use Gaussians in general for lattices and here. It just seems to be... I don't know, it just seems to be useful everywhere, Gauss, normal distribution. So anyway, the m-dimensional normal distribution is something like this. Um, so whatever this is, it doesn't matter. Um, and the discrete normal distribution is the probability of getting an x, a uh, condition that it's an integer. So again, I mean, you can kind of ignore these two slides. They, they're just technical. So the idea is the following. The different rejection sampling, instead of picking a random y that's kind of small, you pick a random y from some normal distribution. Then you know that SC plus y has that same normal distribution, but shifted by SC. And now sort of a rejection sampling is you output ZC with some probability. Basically, this is rejection sampling. If, you, if your target distribution is this, then you output your sample with probability this divided by uh, the distribution you have scaled by some constant. And you hopefully this constant is not too big, because the probability that you reject will be basically uh, 1 minus 1 over this constant. So you want this constant to be small and uh, this to work. I, honestly, I don't have intuition for why Gaussians here work better. But uh, when you work out the math, they do. So I don't know. Uh, anyway, so what you need to do is you pick the, the standard deviation to be square root of m. And so you get z to be order m. So now it's better than before instead of being to 1.5. So, so this saves a little bit. So this saves a lot theoretically. It saves a factor of root m. In practice, it doesn't save too much because, I don't know, you have Gaussians everywhere. You have constants. But I think what the bigger savings is in practice, if you care about practical signatures, is switching from cis to LWE or switching from high-density knapsacks to low-density knapsacks. 
And um, so this is the slide from before, what I needed for the security reduction requirements. I remember I wanted the signature to be independent of the secret key, and given the public key, the secret key is not unique. But what if we replace this requirement with given the public key, it's only computationally indistinguishable whether the secret key is unique. So this is kind of the, now the secret key could be unique, but nobody can tell whether it is. So this is the, low, this is the other knapsack, um, knapsack case. So now the security intuition is as following. So we have this hybrid game before the previous security reduction where you've given, um, this is your real signature scheme, but you change it to a different signature scheme. You change the S. So you increase the value of S, and you give the public key as AT equals AS mod Q. So this is a completely invalid public key, but it looks fine to the adversary. So all you have to hope for now that with this invalid public key, uh, public key and an invalid secret key, you can still sign. So you cannot sign, actually. Even if you know this invalid secret key, you cannot sign, so you have to program the random oracle. But with programming the random oracle, then you can, then you can actually trick the adversary into thinking that you're signing correctly. And here, the secret key is not unique because you raise the value of S. So now, the way you do signatures is you can't do this anymore, but you know this distribution. You know this distribution is independent of the secret key. So you don't really need the secret key. So what you do is you pick the C according to this, pick the Z according to this, so pick the joint distribution correctly so that it's equivalent. And then, to make sure to do the rejecting correctly, with some probability, you actually output ZC and you program the random oracle to output correctly. So this is your simulation of signatures. And the security reduction is now exactly the same. Given an A, you pick the random invalid S, and then now you sign by programming the random oracle. And then at the end, the adversary either says, ah, you know, you have an invalid secret key, in which case we solve the um, knapsack problem, or he actually gives us a solution to sys. So remember, this is the hardness of the knapsack problem from a few slides before. And now here is the signature hardness, just basic idea. Based on sys, remember this part was the sys, hardness of finding the secret key was quite difficult, but the hardness of forging signatures was easier because, the, because we were adding some, we were, the size of the signatures, the length of the vector of the signatures was bigger than the secret key. It was bigger by a factor of root n. This is what uh, we showed before based on rejection sampling. You need this gap of root n. The signature must be bigger than the secret key in order to hide the secret key. So, this, so now the, what's the hardness of the signature? Well, it's here. I mean, I don't care that you can't find the secret key. You can still forge. Based on LWE, you can take smaller keys, which are over here. And now the hardness of finding a smaller key is here. But now the, you need this gap of root n for the length of the si signature vector. Well, it's here. So it's kind of on the same line based on what we know about um, uh, breaking knapsacks. So really, the hardness of the signature is over here. And there's really a reduction from, from this guy to this guy. So it's really based on this problem. Um, so this is why I think based on uh, you have to really, it makes sense to base signatures on these knapsacks that are low density, or LWE. And so just uh, some basic parameters, just to show that this is really important, uh, the LWE thing. Um, the secret key, so let's say you base it on sys. Well, to get a, about 100-bit security based on the cryptanalysis work of Gamma and Guyen and then Chen and Guyen, um, the secret key is about 12,000 bits and public key is about the same. Uh, and the signature size is about 140,000 bits using rings. Now, if you're willing to um, switch to LPN, uh, sorry, LWE, the secret key size kind of goes down by a lot, about 2,000 bits. Public key stays the same. And now the signature really decreases to about 17,000 bits. And uh, so once you're here, now you, you know, maybe you don't need to do so much theoretical work. Now you can really kind of tinkle, tinker with the, um, uh, with the parameters, curve in some crazy, uh, not, not with the parameters, but uh, maybe do some things uh, like hacks to try to really lower things. So this is a work that we did with uh, Tim Gunesu and uh, Thomas Popelman. Um, so, and so we, we got it down to like 9,000 bits, and this was implemented on FPGA cards, uh, and it's more efficient. Uh, than, than, than a lot of the public key signatures. Uh, the signature size is still big, 9,000, but I think uh, you can get it down to, I mean, with more tinkering, 
maybe even maybe less, maybe six or six. I think once it's 5,000, you're quite good. I mean, it's good enough for practice. So that's it. Thanks. Do we have a little time for questions? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting so question the, the because, question is, for example, for, sorry, can, for, um, uh, for number theoretic stuff, I mean, so I guess, okay, if you didn't hear the question, there was, uh, can you remove random oracles and still get uh, efficiency? I think for lattices, this would be a really interesting problem because in um, like number theoretic constructions, you can almost get the same efficiency, maybe twice as inefficient. For lattices, it looks really, really difficult. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's been any work that even came close to getting uh, parameters that are even, you know, this size. So the, the signatures of Boyan, I think the, these are the best known, one, the most efficient ones. I think they're much, much worse. Uh, so at this point, you, you really have to say, do you really care about, ra or, you know, try to get something with random oracles, or, or do you really care that a random oracle is in there? But this is a good question, to get something without random oracles that's almost. There's somebody trying to ask a question. <laughs> His mic's not working, though. No. Hello? Oh, yeah. okay, right. So, obviously, with your LW, you get this nice equivalence in hardness level. Do you have any intuition or any idea if you can get it closer to the peak or get it really at that peak? Any sort of idea how you could do that? So, sorry, what was it? Closer to what? So, the difficulty, if you could try and get... So, with your LWE, you're somewhere close to the peak, but what... Is there any way you could get really at the peak? Do you see any way possible of doing that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's all about narrowing this gap that you need between the size of the secret key and the signature. So, right, so before the gap was m, now the gap is root m. Uh, I mean, it was, it was surprising to me that you could get a gap of less than m, but... Uh, I, I, I want to, I don't know, and this is really what the, what the question is. And theoretically, this now matches uh, the trapdoor construction. So there seems to be something that's sort of stopping both of them uh, from getting closer to the peak. Uh, I, I mean, I, of course, I mean, I can't say that it's impossible. <laughs> but it, 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 that, that's, the, that's the right question to ask. Can you get closer to the peak? <laughs> so let's thank Vadim again.